Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Tim. He is D. This is the Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. Getting going now about um, Mark Cuban, an article I saw today on ESPN basically saying why can't he own the team because uh, for, first of all, let, let's get into the little things about how what's going on with the Dodgers because the Dodgers are basically the team he would be taking over. D, just explain how the whole thing's going down. Uh, what McCord has to do to keep the team, things like that. Basically, McCord has to make payroll by June 30th, and in his own words, he has no chance to make payroll. So if that happens, Major League Baseball will step in and then resume management ownership of the LA Dodgers. So that's basically what's going to happen. Yeah, and I, I at that point, I think they're going to go up for sale, essentially like the Rangers did last year. And last year, Nolan Ryan and a group of people got together and ended up just beating out the group that uh, Mark Cuban was with to buy the Rangers. So, I mean, he was close to getting a team last year. And quite frankly, long term for that team, it might have been better off that Cuban got the team because I think he has more money to spend and he's already in that area. But uh, if this team goes up for sale, would you like to see him take over the Dodgers? Yeah, definitely. I think any team Mark Cuban would be a part of would be a great move for him, of course, just because the type of owner he has shown himself to be in Dallas. Now, I know with the previous times Cuban has tried to acquire a team, Sealy has really kind of maneuvered teams away from him basically because of the fact that he spends money. Now, that seem, might seem odd to some people, but Sealy likes the more conservative type of owners because when you have the Yankees who have a 200-plus million payroll, which is 500% more than Kansas City's $36 million payroll, it tends to raise the price of players. And obviously, when you're sealing, you're the commissioner, you're with the owners, and you want the price of players to be down. But I think now, after Cuban has showed himself, I think with this championship in the NBA, that really has uh, validated his ownership to many people. And many people were on a we're in bad terms with Cuban. I used to hear a lot of bad things about him. I've always liked him because I've always liked that kind of owner who was a part of the team. It wasn't just some guy sitting in a box away from the team, especially around um, the Toledo area. You know, I'm not that far from Cleveland, and that's what Cleveland Indians fans always say about their owner. With It just seems to me that Cuban would be a great owner for the Dodgers, for any team. Back in 05, he was actually interested in um, purchasing the Pirates, and he was told they weren't for sale. I I would like to see him own a more small market team. That's just my own opinion, but of course it would be great to have him in L.A. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see him take over a team like the Pirates because I think they become less and less small market when he takes over that team because he's going to spend the money. Uh, just the name is going to attract people there. And quite frankly, I think that MLB needs to set up something where you got to be between a $100 million payroll and 140 They need to get out these owners who are spending $36 million on a team. like To, to not let someone in because they're going to spend too much money to me almost seems like you're saying, well, we have owners that refuse to spend the money, so we can't allow you in. So, I completely agree. I mean, the problem has never been to me um, the majority of the teams. It's been the extreme and then the extreme on the other end with the teams like the Royals spending $36 million. It's just the contrast. That's the problem. I mean, the teams in the pack were spending, you know, $85 million to $130 million. I think that's fine. I think that's a good range to go off of. It's just the extremes where we have issues. Yeah. I mean, I don't even see an issue with the Yankees, Red Sox, Phillies as much because if you have the money and the league allows you to spend it, obviously you're going to spend it. That, that has more to do with the league needs to set up some type of salary structure thing. Uh, salary cap essentially where you got to spend between X amount and X amount and at, at that point Mark Cuban becomes one of the most attractable owners because he's going to go out there and spend the money and I, I love this guy he's out there with the team when they won the NBA finals he's standing there hugging all the players I mean this guy is a great great owner as long as he's out of his legal troubles I know he had something with insider trading or something like that where he got in trouble so as long as he has he is out of the woods with that I don't see any issue with allowing him to take over an MLB team because I think Bud Selig is going to be out of the game in a couple years regardless so I think eventually this guy is going to get a team 
Yeah, I do too. I agree completely. I mean, the really question is, is he good for baseball? I mean, that, that's it. I mean, that, that's yeah. the main question. And some people say in the right situation. I personally think in any situation, um, he'd be good for baseball, no matter what. He's going to come in and take a team and turn them around. He's going to make it his reclamation project and turn the team around. And I, I just I don't see any issue with him taking over any team because right now the Dodgers have almost become small market team, which is a, ridiculous considering they're in the second biggest market in America. I think that allowing this guy to take over the Pirates would be one of the best things baseball could do because you put him in a... I mean, the Pirates aren't small market. It, most of it's just the owner there doesn't spend money, but they're not big market either. So putting him in a situation like that would be great. Putting him in a situation where he's going to have to spend a lot of money, but he will do it, is great. And he wins championships, he treats the players well, and quite frankly, I, I think looking at this guy, he becomes very attractable to play for. I agree. And the thing I like about him the most, I feel some owners sometimes get too involved in the management side of things. I feel like he really has a grasp of that, and he knows his place. And I think baseball owners, that's especially important, just to understand, let baseball people make the baseball decisions, still be involved, but allow the brains of the operation to really be at work. And I think that's really what he does well in Dallas. Yeah, like with with Rick Carlisle, he had a hands-off approach. He allowed him to do what he wanted with that team. Mark Cuban just basically, along with their GM, put the people in place. He's not a Jerry Jones where you're going to see him, oh, I need to be owner, GM, and essentially coach of the team. He's going to go out there, he's going to put the best product on the field. Even if the team is an ex a good contending team right away, he's going to make it exciting. And I think I think that Mark Cuban is the best thing that baseball could, or that could happen for baseball, and I think it's a shame if they don't allow him to take over a team pretty soon. I'm Tim, he's D, we'll see you later.